All right, gang, moving right along to story number two, sort of continuing that theme, how multiculturalism and now diversity, inclusion, equity, etc., have destroyed any semblance that we had to begin with as an actual nation state where we actually were rooted in reality and realized, oh yes, uh, you know, a nation state cannot run on ideology. It has to actually anchor itself in reality and actually react to reality, react to the world as it is, not like how we wish the world were. To continue that theme, here's a little piece that was perfect for 9-11. So you have the 20th anniversary of 9-11. 3,000 Americans dead. And what did we tell ourselves about 9-11? What did we tell ourselves? What was the excuse that we gave about why these jihadi scumbags would kill themselves and a whole bunch of innocent other people to fly two commercial airline planes into the Twin Towers in New York City? If you remember, it was because, well, they hated our freedoms. They hated our freedom. They hated that we were free. They hated that we were free. Now, that explanation is bogus. I'll just say that out front, okay? They don't hate us because we're free. They hate us because they genuinely believe that we are the great Satan, that we are the great corrupter of the world. And honestly, when you look at what Hollywood and uh, fashion and academia churn out and then export to the world, um, you can kind of see their point. Not saying that the answer is to put on a suicide vest onto you and your eight-year-old kid go into a mall in Dead Moose Junction, Montana and blow a whole bunch of innocent people up at the, you know, at the, uh, at the food court. Not saying that at all. Just saying that you can start to understand more clearly how the enemy thinks when you actually take them at their face value and not try to create an ideological narrative that has absolutely no bearing to the facts at all, okay? But any, but aside from that, the story that we told ourselves was that we were attacked on 9-11 because the terrorists hated freedom. They weren't free, we are free, therefore, we have the terrorist attack. So you would think that if people actually honestly believe that, and many people still do, that you would actually want to, you would want to announce that you are free to the mountaintops. You would want to make that the primary message at home and abroad, right? Which would mean that you would actually you would just rub the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, etc., in their faces and say like, ha, you know what? You couldn't kill these things on 9-11. You're not going to kill these things now. They are going to outlast you and your terrorist buddies for centuries. We're still going to be here when you guys are fertilizing the desert with your bones. The problem is that's really hard to do when the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights are no longer the charters of freedom. And they're no longer the charters of freedom, gang, because they didn't, quote-unquote, give everyone their freedom. And that is seriously now what is going to happen. The term charter of free... The, the, char the term charters of freedom which have been attached to the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights is more than likely now going to be retired because it is insensitive and not inclusive enough. This is from Fox News. National Archives Racism Task Force members rip Charters of Freedom label for Constitution and the Declaration. So, to rehash this, a few months ago, back in May, the National Archives, the, the official federal government body that is responsible for actually preserving American history, set up a task force to decide whether or not the National Archives itself was guilty of racism. For example, they said that all of the paintings in the rotunda 
under the Capitol Dome, which is actually where, um, you know, where you have scenes, for example, of uh, moments of American history. I believe it's the uh, inauguration of George Washington. Um, there's one, I believe, of the signing of the Declaration. But anyway, those, those pictures, so those paintings on the rotunda and in the National Archives too, illustrating key moments in American history would have to be scrapped and redone because, well, they're just, they, they, they don't represent minorities like blacks and women enough. Uh, never mind that maybe the reason why they weren't represented there is because there weren't any women, any black people there for those events. Particularly that particular moment, that particular key scene that these paintings illustrate. Okay. So anyway, that's what they were doing. So now this commission of the National Archives has finished its work and the task force decided that, you know what? Well, I should say the task force suggested that the term Charters of Freedom be retired. From this piece uh, from Fox News, during the presentation, a museum subgroup recommended that NARA retire the term Charters of Freedom as descriptors for the U.S. Constitution, Bill of Rights, and the Declaration of Independence. We should retire the term Charters of Freedom and remove it from our web pages, publications, and exhibits because, as we learned, these documents did not result in freedom for everyone, said one presentator whose name was redacted. Isn't that a coincidence? What a coinky dink. His name was redacted. Another presenter of the same museum subgroup, whose name was also redacted, my gosh, it's almost like they don't want their names to be published after saying these things, said members were tasked with recommending policies and procedures that ensure that everyone feels welcomed, included, and represented at our museums and presidential libraries. The, president, the presenter told a story about a black congressional staffer who took issue with the Charters of Freedom label, which currently appears on the archives website and in exhibits. It happened during a tour of the rotunda led by the Congressional Office, the presenter said, according to a transcript of the event. During this tour, the leader referred to the Declaration of Independence, Constitution, and Bill of Rights as the Charters of Freedom, which many of us often do. It was at this point that one of the tour members, a black congressional staffer, turned to him and said, Those are not my Charters of Freedom. Unquote. Uh, yes, they are your charters of freedom, Mr. or Miss, or whoever you were back then, because it was only with the American Revolution, which was made official by the Declaration of Independence, and then with the formulation of the actual United States, officially under the Constitution, that you were eventually made free. First of all, there's a very, very big possibility that this person has absolutely no right to even say that the Declaration and the Constitution aren't his charters of freedom, because it's very possible that he wasn't even related to American slaves. I do believe that the vast majority of Africans who emigrated to America came after the Civil War. In other words, after slavery had already been abolished. That's the first point. The second point, as I have said, I believe, several times before, it was the American Revolution, the principles of the Revolution, that actually started the anti-slavery movement here in the United States to begin with. It was only after Americans had fought for their freedom, fought for their independence from England, that they then turned around and said, huh, you know what? This whole slavery thing doesn't really gel well with this whole revolution that we were just fighting five minutes ago. We're gonna have to look at that. And that is completely true. It is after the revolution that you have states such as Massachusetts and New York and New Hampshire outlawing slavery. There had never been a lot of slaves in those northern states because of temperature, climate, um, agricultural practices there, etc. But there had been a few. 
After the revolution, abolition laws are passed saying, nope, slavery is not going to be here. Even in the South, after, during and after the revolution, manumissions go through the roof. Slave owners are freeing their slaves either while they're alive or in their wills. In fact, this is one reason why so many of the founders and the framers didn't think that they needed to do anything actually with slavery because they honestly thought that slavery was on the outs, that it was naturally dying right in front of their eyes. That wasn't just them putting on a, a rose-colored blindfold and stuffing their fingers in their ears while whistling past uh, the plantation saying, nope, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay. They honestly thought all the proof that they had right there said that slavery was going to be dead within the next 10, 15, 20 years, which then of course meant that not only does no one have to do anything, but then no one, at, there is no friction now between the different sections of this newly established and very fragile union that has been created. So that is all bogus. Okay, so if you are a black, those are still your charters of freedom. If, they're, if you don't want them to be your charters of freedom, then you should find a new homeland to actually go to. Now, I could keep going on like this, gang. I could keep going on like this. Because it is infuriating, just the very idea that something so core to us as Americans, such as the Declaration and the Constitution, would now be stripped of their title of Charter of Freedom. Because, well, it didn't grant everyone their freedom, as if everything is supposed to be perfect right from the get-go is maddening enough. It's an attack on, it's another attack on the country, it's another attack on our history, it's another attack on one of our legitimate identities as Americans. And that's the point. That's the point. What is happening here, gang, is that one narrative is being destroyed for another narrative. In the next On the Stone video that's going to be uploaded this week, I promise, uh, we are going to be talking about the 20th century philosopher Eric Vogelin. And we talk about Vogelin, we're going to be talking about Vogelin and Gnosticism and leftism and all that good stuff. But Eric Vogelin, another one of his big ideas was that all nations fundamentally operate because of a mythology. Nations exist because of a mythology. He argued in several places, that language itself is simply the expression of a mythology. If you don't have a mythology, you don't have a people. And if you don't have a people, you can't have a country or a nation. So when, when the charge is made that leftists today want to remake the United States, they want to remember what President Obama said, fundamentally transform the United States. What better way can you do that than by changing the mythology? What other way can you do that outside of changing the fundamental mythology of your country? And that's exactly what's happening here, gang. Because if the Declaration and if the Constitution are not the charter of freedom, if they are just one very, very poor step, maybe even an oppressive step because they were all made by white racists, then that means that our charter of freedom has to be something else. Well then, does that mean that it's the Civil Rights Act of 1964? Does, is it Roe v. Wade? Is it Planned Parenthood versus Casey? Or is this actually going to be another step towards the left, one of the left's goals of actually scrapping the Constitution completely and starting fresh again. Because that has actually been seriously argued on more than one occasion. That's what's happening, gang. It is the erosion of our mythology, the erosion of our identity as Americans in order to make way for a new mythology 
that will by its very nature change the country and then by extension change who we are too. That's what's happening. That's the big picture. And that's story number two.